Number 29, a solution of potassium nitrate and electrolyte and a solution of glycerin, which is C3H5OH3, a non-electrolyte, both boils at 100.3 degrees Celsius. What other physical properties of the two solutions are identical? Okay, so in this case, we have potassium nitrate. So potassium nitrate, this will be a good test to see if we can draw what the chemical compound is for potassium nitrate, right? Uh, potassium nitrate, we got glycerin. Potassium nitrate is KNO3. Did you get that? Potassium is in group one, so that's a plus one charge. And nitrate is a polyatomic that we know and love, right? NO3 always has a minus one charge. So one for one, it's just KNO3. Glycerin, they told us, is C3H5OH3. Now, in terms of these two compounds, right, KNO3 is ionic. Maybe I'll write that a little bit more in the middle. And glycerin is a covalent compound because it only has nonmetals, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Would this be polar or nonpolar? We clearly have OHs on the left side, right, with no OHs on the right side, depending on if they, they wrote it this way. So this would be clearly asymmetrical. Asymmetrical means that you have a polar molecule. So this would be a polar covalent compound. So we'll just say polar covalent. Now in this case, they both said that we have a solution, right? and they talked about it being an electrolyte or a non-electrolyte. So in order to make up a solution, you have to have a solute plus a solvent. Now, in this case, the potassium nitrate and the glycerin, these are going to be the small compounds that are being dropped into your solvent to make up the solution. The way that I remembered these S words was that solute had six letters, solvent has seven, and the solution has eight. The smallest uh, component, usually a solid, is going to get dropped into your liquid, which is the larger amount, and together they make up the largest amount, which is the solution. So, potassium nitrate and glycerin, these are both of your solutes. But the question is, who is my solvent. They didn't say, but they did say that it boiled at 100.3 degrees Celsius. There's only one boiling point that you should memorize for this chemistry class, and that is that the normal boiling point, I'll just say BP, the normal boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. If we had a pure, um, if we just had a pure solution of just water and we boiled it, it would boil exactly at 100 degrees Celsius. Now, we have a little bit of elevation because this boiling point is a little higher by 0.3 um, for, uh, from the normal boiling point of water. And I put the two pieces together that, hey, this is really close to 100. The solvent had to definitely be 100. Sorry, the, the solvent definitely had to be H2O. So in this case, the solvent for both of these is H2O because they said that they both boil at 100. And boiling point is very reliant on your solvent, not necessarily your solute. A little bit, but it's more reliant on your solvent. Now in this case... We have an ionic compound coming in with a H2O. Keep in mind that H2O is polar as well. And any time that you have an ionic compound that's being dissolved in something that's polar, this will clearly dissolve because the H2O will solvate or surround the ions. So the positive uh, potassium will be surrounded by the negative oxygen of the water. 
just to kind of show you. And the negative uh, nitrate will be surrounded by the positive end of the hydrogens. Just to kind of show you who would be facing in that direction. Same thing goes for the glycerin. You have a polar covalent compound. It's coming together with something that's polar. Like dissolves in like. So this would also dissolve. And if they both dissolve, we know that both of these would be a homogeneous mixture. So that is one physical property that these solutions have that are identical. They are both homogeneous mixtures. Now, just like the boiling point is highly reliant on the solvent, the freezing point is highly reliant on the solvent. If we are having the same boiling point elevation, it increased by 0.3 from its original, that means that you generally have the same amount of water that's in both of these solutions. And if you have the same amount of water in both of the solutions, right, and the, and the, and the, um, the boiling point is increased exactly identical for these two solutions, that also means that the freezing point will be exactly identical. So we know the other physical property is that the freezing point depression will be identical as well. Just know that boiling point always goes higher. So you will never have a boiling point for water that goes lower. So you won't have like a 98 degrees Celsius, 99 degrees Celsius. Boiling point always increases. So that's why the myth of adding salt, one of the salts is KNO3, but the salt that we use is NaCl. The myth is that if you add salt to water, it will lower the boiling point and it will boil faster. But you say to everybody, aha, that is not true. If you add salt to water, it actually increases the, um, the boiling point. <laughs> um, so it will never and never, never decrease it. It can only go higher. The freezing point will get lowered. The freezing point will never be able to go higher. Okay. So they both are homogeneous mixtures. That's identical. Their freezing point depressions will also be identical. So they'll go a little bit lower. Um, and just know that the normal freezing point of H2O is zero degrees Celsius. So it will go into negative numbers, maybe negative point uh, three. I don't know. So we'll box that off. That's super important to know. Um... I think these are good enough, right? What other physical properties are identical? Yeah, I mean, homogeneous, sure. Freezing point depression, I think we hit the, the, the two other ones. If you think of any others, let me know in the comments. And I love to get back to you on that. We could have a discussion, all right? But yeah, homogeneous, freezing point depression, those would also be identical. And that's it. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Love helping you guys out. Tons of videos out there for you guys on the channel to get you through your chem course. We also got math videos and physics videos for you, the whole course, um, with more subjects coming your way. We really love to help you out. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of the community. And I'll talk to you soon, okay? All right, bye-bye.